Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to put buttons on a report. On a report? Really? Buttons on a report? Yeah, buttons on a report. They've got some surprisingly good uses. Today's question comes from Noah in White Plains, New York, one of my Platinum members. Noah says, I love the trick you showed in the embedded report video to display contacts on the customer form using a report instead of a subform because it displays long contact notes and I can just read everything on the screen at once. Is there a way to make it so you can just click on the record there in the report to edit it instead of having to switch to a data entry mode? Well, yes, Noah, there are a couple of ways we can do this. We can use some event programming or we can just drop a button on the report itself. Let me show you. All right, but first for everyone else, if you have not yet watched the embedded report video, go watch it. Basically, instead of putting a subform here, right, that looks like this, you can put a report here so that if you do have longer notes, they'll show right here and you can just scroll down and read everything instead of having to, you know, click on here or open up the zoom box or put it in a bigger text field on the bottom. It's just nice and pretty. Plus, there's some formatting options you can get in reports that you just can't do with a form. So go watch this video now if you have not yet watched it already. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch that and come on back. Now, while this video was an expert level video and I show you how to do this without any programming, today's video is a developer video. We're going to use a little tiny bit of VBA today. So if you have never programmed with VBA before, go watch this video again. It's free and come on back. All right, so I'm going to go to the website and grab my database from the embedded report video. If you're a gold member, you can grab it too. If not, well, you'll just have to build it from this video. So I'm going to grab a copy. Yes, I happen to be a gold member on my own website. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the video we built last time. And in the customer with contacts form here, we've got the sub form with the contacts. And you can see if you got any long ones in here, you got to, you know, you could put a notes field down here or you're going to have to, you know, shift F2, zoom in to read, whatever. So what we did was we made a subform that looks like this. You can just scroll down and it will display everything. And if you've got a really long, you know, item like this here, right? Which one is that? It's going to be this guy. Okay. You come in here and type in a bunch more stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Really long contacts, right? You come back over here and you can see the really long contacts here. So this is a nice way to display information, but you can't easily edit it here, right? So what Noah would like to be able to do is to just from here, edit this. Now you can't edit this in the report itself, unfortunately. Okay. Reports just don't allow that, but you can make a button for each of these guys or a click event or any number of different ways to where you can just go right to this record, right? Instead of having to switch to a data entry mode and find it, we can open up a second form, maybe over here or right on top of this one, and then you can edit it and then return back to this guy. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's go find the report. First of all, it's right down here. Where are you? The contact R design view. Okay, here's the report. Now, even though this is a report, we can drop buttons on here just like we would with our forms, right? So we're going to go to report design. Let me open this up and find a command button and drop it right there. Now, notice that the command button wizard does not start up. It doesn't work for reports. This is one of, one of the reasons why I told you you need to know VBA to do this. Okay. So let's change the caption on here to open or edit or view or whatever you want to call it. All right. We'll slide it up here in the corner. All right. Just like that. Let's open up its properties. Let's call this open record button BTN. All right, we'll need a little bit of VBA to open up the record for this contact. This is a contact record. Okay. So right click, build event. That'll open up your code editor. All right. And then do command dot open form. What's the form we want to open up? Well, let's open up our contact F for now, comma, comma, comma. The where condition is going to be where the contact ID on that form equals the contact ID for the current record. Okay. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know, we've done this a bunch of times and it always works, right? So debug compile, 
Okay, looks good. Close it. Close it. Close it. All right, now you can open it up right from here if you want to. All right, there it is. This is what it'll look like when you open it up inside the other form. Okay, now go ahead and click one of the buttons. Eh. Tech help free template can't find the field contact ID referred to in your expression. All right, debug, what's that mean? Well, it can't find this guy, contact ID. Now, if you guys watched my video last week on the internal field list in Microsoft Access, you know that a form doesn't necessarily have to have a field on it for you to use its value, right? All right, we talked about this last week. You can refer to a field that's not on a form as long as it's in the underlying record set, the underlying table or query. Well, reports don't work that way, unfortunately. It has to do with the way that the report is generated internally, okay? But in order to use a value, that field has to be on the report. There's no way around it, okay? So this contact ID has to be on this report. Now, it doesn't have to be visible. You could put it on there and make it hidden, but it's got to be there, okay? This, this, I get asked this a lot from people. Because forms don't work this way. Forms, you don't have to have that field on there. So let's stop this and come over here. We can close this. Let's go to design view. All right, and we just have to add that field somewhere on this report. So we'll go to the add existing fields, find the contact ID, drop it on here. I'm gonna delete the label, All right? Take this guy, maybe shrink it into here. All right, and I'm gonna open up his properties Go to format and set visible to no. You don't have to see it. And just for me, I like to make it so that any fields that I make hidden, I set their background color to red. It just tells me in design view this guy's there, but it's hidden. Okay. All right. Save it. Close it. Close it. Open it back up again. And now click and there's your form. See that? Now, this is a continuous form. You could make a single form for it if you want to. That's what I'd recommend. All right, you can maybe come over here and uh, take this contact F, maybe copy paste, right? We'll call this contact single F, right? And now you can take this and reformat this as a single form. Okay, maybe we'll do like, um, like this. We'll take the description, we'll put it here, make it bigger, like so, right? All right, you got your date above it. All right, you no longer need to put this stuff in a form footer. You could put it right up here, right? Follow up. You get the point, right? Okay, this. I'm not going to take forever with this one, but now we'll just change this from a continuous form to a single form. All right, there you go. Save it, close it, All right? Contact single F now. So back here, we'll open up contact single F. Okay, and now. From our report, we go like this, boom, and there's that. See, put it where you want it, close it, right? Open that one, boom, there you go. Make this as big as you want. That's the one nice thing about reports is the can grow, can shrink, right? This can get as big as it needs to be with, with a form, you really can't do that. That's it for today, folks. Lots more coming up in part two. Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel, and we'll continue this lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button.
you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.